Ray.com, Ray.com. I'm here with, um, if you are one of the 8,000 subscribers, you know that I have been a fanatic and a huge fan of Dance with the Stars since season one. So next to me is probably one of the hottest women that was ever on the show. <laughs> the abs that we all die for, the legs, and the, the most beautiful body we saw during the, the whole run of the series. And just was one of the most energetic, fun people to watch on that season, Miss Lisa Rinna. Thank you. That's so nice. Oh, wow. Oh, no. no I'm, I'm Thank love you. you every week. Oh, I mean, fun. I grew this on you every Thank you. week. Thank you. I grew a lot, didn't I? You did. I you transformed. Did. Jeez, that was like a transformer but by I the mean, end of it. I mean, when you wore the red costume and with the fringe. Oh, the pink. Hot pink. And, and, uh, yes. And your abs. was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that was the dancing. You know, it just shredded you. It just shredded your... I mean, too bad we can't live like that constantly. It's hard to keep that that was perfection. I mean, it was just awesome, you know, to have that body. Fabulous. Oh, and you just look incredible. Um, I, mean, I had such a good time. Oh, you, you, you could tell. I, I enjoyed mean, myself so mentally. I really did. And then your husband was the next season. Yeah, how about that for taking on a challenge? <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. To, to come on after me and, and to not be a dancer and to take that, I give him so much credit. He did a great job. We ended up going on the tour, and he became such a good dancer. You should see him. Fantastic. Well, now you're both going to be on sh in Chicago on Broadway. How about that? That's what came out of this whole thing. And you know, I'm, yeah, truly. I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you are the first husband and wife team. Second. Second. Is it Michael Hall? It's Michael Hall. Oh, I thought so. Michael Hall, and Michael C. Sandler. Hall, and Amy Sandler are the first. Wow. Yes, we're the first brunette. Married couple. They were blonde. I would say they're the light version. We are the first brunette couple. There you go. Yeah. Married. What um, what made you decide to tack to tackle on Chicago and Roxy? Well, it's been a dream of mine my whole life. A dream that I thought would never happen. Just a dream. You know when you just have dreams. Mm -hmm. I should call it a fantasy because I really didn't think it would happen. But Chicago was always my favorite show. I'm a big Broadway fan. I've always loved musical theater, dance. I did musical theater growing up. So I had that, but then I never did anything with it professionally. I just had it in my back pocket. So I've seen Chicago 10 times. I love it so much. And I just thought, you know, after doing Dancing with the Stars, it changed my life so dramatically. And I thought, well, gosh, I can dance now. I know I can sing. I'm a pretty good actress. Why don't I audition for it? I'm going to try it. Audition. I went and auditioned for it, honey. I flew myself to New York. Oh, no, no, no. This should just catch what's wrong with people. Wow. I, I flew. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Fran, come on. It makes it sweeter this way. <laughs> Damn it, I heard it. I flew myself to New York. I went in. I danced with Greg Butler for an hour. I sang with Leslie. What's Leslie's last name? Jeez, I'm terrible with names. But the, you know, musical director, the one who's been there 10 years. So fantastic. And then I danced and sang and did the Roxy monologue for Barry. Hi. So I earned it. I went and I and I think that's the way to do it because if I just been, you know, here, come do this, I think it would be a different experience. I know I can do it. I know I have to work hard, but I know I'm going to be able to do it because I did it for two and a half hours in that room. So, you know, I should be able to bring it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean I've seen you in, on, in, you know, many films and Especially a lot of, you know, on television and all those yeah. things and all that. So definitely you have the, the acting chops. And, yeah. you know, if you're dancing, well, hello. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's saucy, so it's a little different. Oh. But, you know, I, I love a challenge. But how about this? They offered it to my husband. My husband didn't have to do a damn thing. How about that? That's it, I'm see. That's okay. He's earned it. <laughs> he, does, he has earned it, but it's true. It's like, they don't even know if he can sing. <laughs> I don't know anything. So just stand here and the girls move around. <laughs> I mean, come on. Just to have Harry Hamlin, that, I understand it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I totally get it. What, um, because so many already famous women have already played Roxy, or yeah, from Melanie Griffin, to Rita Wilson, and so on. Brooke Shields, Cheetah Rivera, Anne Ryan King, Sandy Duncan. I mean, the list. Goes on and on. What would you like to bring to your own version of Roxy? What what would be the subtext? Um, mm, that's a really interesting question. I mean, I think it's I think she's funky. I think she's abroad. I think she is 
a bad girl, you know. She, but she's lovable and she's vulnerable. And I guess I just want to bring the most of myself to the role of Roxy because I think the beauty of playing Roxy is anyone can bring whatever they are and whoever they are to that role, and it makes it that much better. You know, I can never do what Melanie Griffith did. Melanie Griffith does what Melanie Griffith does. Rita Wilson was fantastic, but she did it as Rita Wilson. She brought Rita Wilson. So to me, that's the key, is you got to bring your body, you got to bring your stuff. So I'm sure my rocks will be quite excited and funky and, you know, because I'm a high-energy person. Um, I also think that, you know, my life is really quite parallel to Roxy in so many ways. You know, I have always been one who has dreamt of being a star, you know, coming out of growing up in Medford, Oregon. And, you know, I can really relate to being told no and no and no and no for years and years and really having to work hard to get something. I, I can relate to this character in many ways, feeling like, you know, I'm a lot older than I ever intended to be, you know, at the time. And, you know, there's so many lines that, that she says in it, and I'm just like, wow. You know, life does imitate art, or art imitates life, whatever. I feel like I could not have played this role seven years ago. You know, it's, it's now. So. What, um, out of the entire score, because, you know, Roxy has a lot of the great songs, um, and ha I've seen it many times. I did. Everyone from Sunny Duncan to Melvin Griffin. Who's your favorite? What? <laughs> <laughs> I would you really like. I thought it was Cherry Rivera because mm -hmm. she's my idol. Me too. It would be Sandy Duncan. Me too. I agree with you. I thought when she she was my favorite when she sang the last number and tears went down her face. It was like, oh my god. Too. Yeah. She was. I don't know. She just embodied it. Something about her it just just it brought right? so many different shades of the role. And I was yeah. like, oh my god. I had never seen it before. I agree with you. So I, what I like that you're going to bring, just because it's what I've seen, mm -hmm. you know, besides that those stars, mm -hmm. is that you have a very um, aura, sexual aura about you. It's just very, <laughs> very, no, it's very <laughs> sexy. Funny. And I think that gets Roxy a much more, you know, oh, good. Of, of sexual overtone that makes her, you know, play more of, of her good. Well, that's so interesting because, you know, I've been working with Sandra Bergman in L.A., oh. which that's a whole other dream in itself, you know. I mean, I idolize these women. I grew up idolizing Anne Ranking. Mm. Idolizing. And so all of a sudden to be working with them, it's like, oh, my God. I mean, you know, Sandra Bergman walks in and it's like all that jazz coming at me. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, right? So I so appreciate this experience. But she did say to me the other day, she goes, the one thing Bob taught me was, Less is more. And she said, you have so much sexuality that just, like, scream. She said, you don't have to, like, do anything. That's you true. don't have to push it. So it's interesting that you said that because, of course, I don't walk around thinking that about myself. But she did say, it's there. Don't work it. Just do the thing and less is more. That's true because some of the other, and no offense to the ones who are phenomenal in it, they did have to work at it more. So you could believe that, oh, I can see why she um, was with, Famous and then with the other men. And, and slept around so much and, 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 you know, was doing all the things that she was doing and how manipulative she could be and using her sexuality and... And when, I think when you come out of that role, we're now in our Wow. Good. <laughs> Good. One last thing to worry about, right? I'll, um, because Dallas and Portland's on Kirk and We're on for a week and then Dallas 